welcome. I'm so glad uh, you could all join us here tonight to uh, celebrate your accomplishments and your commitment to teaching. I know how incredibly busy you are, but I think it's really important uh, to pause occasionally and reflect on how much you've accomplished uh, to get this far uh, in your teaching career. And um, we really want to honor everything that you have done to get to this point. Um, and I know student teaching can be a struggle and your coursework can be a struggle, but you uh, really should feel so proud of everything you've done to get here tonight. So um, just a couple notes about how this evening is structured. Um, uh, and uh, we're videotaping this so that your family and friends can uh, look at it later. It'll be available in about a week. Um, what will happen is the uh, presenters will come up and describe the award and then call each of you up individually and at that time your slide will um, appear. And thank you so much for doing those, they are beautiful. Um, and then uh, once you've received your certificate, you'll, um, if you're in a group of awardees, you'll come and stand uh, over here and get your picture taken uh, with the presenter. And then once we're done with all the awards, uh, there'll be an opportunity to uh, talk to each other out at the courtyard. Uh, there'll be some uh, bag of snacks uh, for you to munch on, because I know it's probably been a long day for you. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I also want to um, uh, recognize that a lot of our presenters today are uh, in the School of Ed leadership. Uh, and we also are lucky enough tonight to have some of our uh, supporters in the School of Ed and some of the supporters of our scholarship. So, and you'll be getting to meet them because they'll be the presenters. So um, right now I'd like to introduce our Dean, Dean Richard Aram, who will uh, give out the first scholarship in, in a minute. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Uh, and so uh, let me extend my welcome to the entire uh, group that's here today. There's no more important work than being a teacher. And uh, that's true in any time, but particularly in the moment that we're currently living in. The challenges that we're facing in terms of public health, in terms of the environment, in terms of politics, and the economy are great and profound. And it's gonna take people like yourselves to, to make a difference in uh, the lives of young people. And I wanna remind you of something I told you when, we, when you started the program five months ago, four months ago. This, you, our teacher education program is a small program that's meant to be a model for the country as a whole. You, when we invest in your education, we are thinking of you not just as teachers, but as educational leaders in the future. And so while you're halfway through now, getting the teaching credential and treading water and probably thinking about nothing more than the lesson plan for next week, I want to remind you, you are not just going to be the teachers of tomorrow, you're going to be the educational leaders of tomorrow. And you'll see that uh, when uh, Vicki Vasquez uh, comes up later and shares with you a little bit about her experience. So it is my pleasure to give out awards to four students, the Dean Scholarship uh, Awards. Uh, these are given for academic achievement and commitment to developing skills and knowledge as new teachers. And uh, the first awardee is uh, Tiffany Michelle Yu. <laughs> Tiffany uh, was encouraged uh, by her teachers to no, I wouldn't need my glasses for this, sorry. <laughs> uh, teachers encouraged to develop strengths and reach uh, for their dreams. So excited to be this kind of teacher for students in the future. Tiffany. Thank you. 
Uh, please, please stay up. We're going to take a picture when we have all, all four of you. Uh, the second awardee is Fatima Alkam. Fatima has worked very hard to balance her life as a single mother and a student uh, with the work of developing herself as a teacher. She's dedicating herself to the goal of becoming an educator who fully strives for equity in the classroom. Fatima. Our third awardee is Tyler Casalini. Uh, Tyler is a single subject arts fil uh, in, uh, teacher in arts, film, and digital media. Teaching is an intrinsic practice of love, community care, and personal storytelling. Uh, Tyler is inspired to cultivate a san sanctuary where students will feel empowered to find and express their creative voices. Tyler. And our, our, our fourth uh, Dean Scholarship Awardee is Megan Minguez Marshall, single subject candidate in English, where I taught, uh, I was an English teacher in Oakland, California for a half dozen years. Uh, Megan uh, always considered herself an advocate for different types of learners and loves to celebrate diverse experiences. She's interested in teaching adolescents because she wants to be able to support her, these students in their academic and personal growth during those important years. Megan. One last thing, the kids are getting vaccinated. The five, you know, the five and up. So be patient. We'll be we'll be taking these off uh, soon enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Aram, and congratulations to all of you. Um, I'd like to now introduce our next presenters, Mary Roosevelt and Vicky Vasquez. Um, Mary was the multiple subject coordinator here at UCI for many years, and Vicky Vasquez was one of her students. Uh, this, year, this year, Vicky made a generous contribution to the Mary Roosevelt Scholarship in Teaching and Learning, and we are so grateful for your support. Uh, I'm going to let Mary and Vicky tell you a little bit more about themselves and about their connection. Thank you, Virginia. I cannot talk in a mask, but I'll try not to breathe on anybody <laughs> Yes, I would like to give you a brief description of my almost 60 years as a teacher. It's a long time. I was born in a little village in England during World War II, and I knew from a very early age that I wanted to be a teacher, but I had two goals. I wanted to teach, and I also wanted to travel the world. I did my university work in London, and I taught in England for three years. And then I was very lucky to be invited to the International School of Geneva in Switzerland, to teach. It got even better because when I got there, I became involved in the creation of what is now the International Baccalaureate. And I was chosen to do all the basic curriculum work for the elementary program. And that was my chance to travel. I was sent all over the world. I traveled through North Africa, West and East Africa, all over North and South America, and all over Europe. It was a six-year journey. I was hardly ever home. I had a wonderful subject, uh, substitute teacher in Geneva, and I literally lived on planes and out of suitcases. Um, it was a tough assignment, and it was a very hard sell. Persuading universities that they would like to try a new curriculum, and what we were trying to do was give international students based in Geneva the opportunity to study a curriculum that would take them anywhere in the world, because they were going to, in those days, have to choose between Swiss Abitur, and uh, sorry, Swiss, Swiss certification, German Abitur, English GCE, American College Boards, or French Baccalaureate. 
And if they were expecting to go to France and follow that program, and their parents were sent to Germany, there was a problem. But this curriculum would give them the opportunity to learn all the basics that they needed to get anywhere in the world, including in their own language. Well, that took me six years living out of suitcases. I had one filled with clothes for cold climate, one for warm climates, and I often came back and had an overnight change before I set off somewhere else. It was fascinating and it was wonderful, but it was tough. <laughs> anyway, six years after that, I was asked if I would willingly, happily take up the appointment of the principal of the junior house at the United Nations International School in New York. I was there for a while and then after my marriage, my husband took me back to Switzerland where our daughter was born. In 1972, we decided to relocate to California and I quickly realized that if I ever wanted to teach again, I needed a California teaching credential. So I ended up at UCI, not the UCI that you see today. There were a lot of muddy parking lots with no cars in them. There were three buildings, the administration building, the social science tower where the Office of Teacher Education was housed, and there was also the library. Uh, I was not too thrilled with the program. I got through it, took my teaching credential home. Um, having been a school principal, it was tough for somebody who'd never really taught in an American school to deal with an American curriculum and student teaching. So my heart goes out to you, I've been there too. <laughs> Anyway, Dr. Bailey, who was then the um, chair of that Office of Teacher Education, offered me a job supervising student teachers. So for the next almost 30 years, I did that, and then I was also the academic coordinator for the multiple subject teaching credential program. I happily retired in 2002, but I'm still here, and I don't think I'll actually ever leave. I would actually like to, at this point to thank Vicki Vasquez, because she was my student in 1980-81, and she has given the money for the Mary Roosevelt scholarships today. So a big, big thank you, Vicki, and it's wonderful to reconnect after all these years. Come on up. I'm gonna join Mary and take my mask off too, so don't give us a demerit. <laughs> As Mary said that, um, she was my supervisor, I've been there, and I had a passion, which I think from the dean on up, we've all got this passion to be a teacher. You have to have it. And I truly wanted to be a teacher. I loved Mrs. Roosevelt as my supervisor. But what happened to me is, after I did my two years of uh, student teaching, she said to me, um, Vicki, you're a really good teacher, but I think you're gonna go on and do bigger and better things. And that stuck with me. And I was very fortunate under the Reagan administration to be offered a position with the US Department of Education in Washington, DC. So that began my new adventure. And I promised I would come back and start teaching again I've been in D.C. almost 40 years, and I haven't come back. But um, I just wanted to say thank you to Mary. I am very, very excited to be a part of this program in some small way, and I want to make a commitment for the next program, another 10000 for your 2022. Oh, thank you. Especially knowing... <laughs> hug, hug, hug. <laughs> Especially knowing especially knowing how many years this woman has put in to you, to me, to this education. There was no office of, ed I mean, I think we had an office of education and that was it. Yeah, there was no department. We sat outside, not because of COVID, we just sat outside because Mrs. Roosevelt said we'd sit outside. Um, but I am from Southern California. I grew up here, I'm native. I'm from uh, the San Pasquale Band of Mission Indians. Uh, first. Uh, uh, generation graduate uh, in our family and now I'm in Washington DC as I said I run my own business um, I loved working for the Department of Education making policy look at the things Mrs. Roosevelt has done so 
yes, you're, you're doing some hard stuff right now. You're working really hard on getting your education, but you never know where that's going to lead you. There is no way on this earth I would say I own my own business and can give back like I do um, when I, I, I was in your chair. So keep, keep going, uh, find your passion, and go after it. Take that risk. And stay healthy. <laughs> thank, thank you, Vicki, and a big thank you again for all your support. Okay, now it's time for the awards. These are awarded to MAT students demonstrating excellence in academic scholarship, who have demonstrated de dedication to improving the lives of students and educational opportunities of students and the skills and disposition of leadership. And congratulations to all of you on this achievement. Please come forward when I call your name. Do we have a slide? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Kimberly Dan. <laughs> it's here, it's here. She believes that bilingualism is the door to the path of unity in the world, and she wants to bring a global perspective into her classroom, and I'm sure you will. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> there you go, and stay there. Alondra Perez. Alondra emphasizes the need to be bilingual, and she wrote a review on how computer sciences can help to promote language and literacy development. Congratulations, Alondra. <laughs> Ashley Yanda. <laughs> Ashley has studied at Trinity College Dublin, a university I know very well and taught at Essex University in the UK, as well as working in underserved communities, both here and overseas. Congratulations, Yolanda. Mario Reyes. Is Mario here? Mario notes that while science learning is open to all students, it's actually available to a very few, and he wants to change that. He believes that it is a teacher's responsibility to play to a student's strengths and plan from there. And I'm sure you will. <laughs> Thank you. No, there's another one. No, there's another one. I just haven't got the name. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Jocelyn Aguirre Reyes. <laughs> Lost my notes. <laughs> Jocelyn wants to create a community of learners in her classroom, no matter where they come from. She says, when people ask, how much do you make? She replies, I make a difference. <laughs> you are an amazing group of young educators, embracing the challenges of working with diverse groups of young students, helping them to realize their potential in life. Believe me, I loved most of the minutes in mine. And I'm sure you will too, and you've got a lot to offer. You really are very well talented. And thanks to the School of Education, which I didn't mention, the department did eventually morph into a school after years of struggle. And thanks to Deborah Vandell, who was the founding dean, and the amazing work that Richard Aram has done here, mostly because we tried for years to reach out into the community. And most of the time that I was here, the teaching credential program drove the program. We did not have enough research, nor did we have enough cooperation across the campus. In fact, they even tried to disenfranchise us at one point. But now I am thrilled every time I come back and see how this program has grown. You do not know how very lucky you are to have been part of it, and you are superbly well trained. So go out and make it happen. Good luck.
Well done. Good evening. My name is Muriel Von Aspen, and I am the current multiple subject program coordinator for the Credential and the MAT program. And I'm very excited to be here tonight celebrating all the scholarship recipients. Um, the next scholarship is the Laura E. Settle Scholarship. And this scholarship was established to honor Laura E. Settle, founder of the California Retired Teachers Association. Settle retired as a teacher from the Pasadena School District and served as president of the California Retired Teachers Association for 16 years, from 1929 to 1945. This award recognizes pre-service teachers with financial need and an exemplary character. And I'm happy to announce that the Laura E. Settle Scholarship recipient is Casey Sobata. Casey is strong, she's kind, and she's determined to make a positive impact in the lives of her students. Congratulations, Casey. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. My name is Acacia Warren, and I, yay! <laughs> I am the single subject coordinator, and I am presenting the Bruce Barron Memorial Scholarship Awardee today. Oh, I have to not get emotional. Um, so, uh, Bruce was an instructor for our MAT program, and um, he was an instructor for the social science methods class, um, and in the School of Ed for more than two decades. Um, this honors an outstanding social science candidate with a demonstrated commitment to promoting social justice um, through teaching. Education instructors and students remember Bruce for his ability to support students um, long after they graduated from the credential program. Once students took Bruce's social science methods class, they had a coach and a consultant for life. In fact, several of his former students are now teaching social science methods classes at various colleges in the area. Bruce also had a profound commitment to social justice, human rights, and equity issues. Many of his students have followed in his footsteps in selecting low SES schools to start off their careers. Finally, Bruce's legacy will be remembered for his passionate belief in historical thinking. He felt that teachers have a responsibility to present our full history and that informed citizens don't just happen, but are the result of thoughtful teaching that is inclusive <laughs> and honest. Walk into any group of social science, <laughs> social studies teachers in Irvine and ask how many of them went through Bruce's program at UCI and it will be like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Bruce's wife, uh, Chris, is here and welcome you, uh, Chris. Um, and uh, just a 
quick note uh, about Bruce. Um, I lived in Kenya uh, in fifth and sixth grade. Um, Kenya, Africa. Um, my parents decided to like move us to Africa. So, um, and um, Bruce is the first American that I met who actually, um, he lived in Kenya for um, a few years and he's the first American I met that knew exactly where I was um, when I was in Kenya. So uh, I remember the first day I met him, he was in my office and he only came in to say hi for five minutes and he was in there for almost three hours. And <laughs> he was telling me all kinds of stories about Kenya and it was, it was fabulous to finally meet someone who actually understood my experiences and um, could relate on a very personal level. And so we miss Bruce dearly, um, but we are here to, um, grant Juliana Leal um, the scholarship. <laughs> so Juliana, I um, Juliana, I I typed all my notes in my cell phone <laughs> for all my scholarship recipients, and it's blank. And so I'm like, great, great for tech. Look, 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 Juliana, look, it's great. Can you believe that? It's like, what the heck? Like, so anyways, Juliana is passionate, optimistic, tenacious, um, and she's a passionate educator and hopes to broaden um, the lenses by introducing students to a variety of perspectives that allow students to question and search for their own answers. So congratulations, Julia. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know how to follow that one, Acacia. I think we need to leave the Bruce um, scholarship for the end next time. So, my name is Evelyn Young, and I'm a lecturer supervisor in the MAT program. No, you don't get extra credit for cheering. <laughs> so, I've had um, the privilege of working with four outstanding teacher diversity advocates uh, this year, and over the past few months, they have um, met regularly to wrestle with really complex questions. Questions like, what does it mean to engage in emancipatory pedagogy? How can schools be institutions where students' cultures, languages, and identities are sustained rather than erased? Where we teach the truth of our country's history through a critical lens, and where students are empowered to be change agents in their own community? But more practically, how can we as teacher diversity advocates provide knowledge and resources to our fellow candidates to prepare them to engage in resistance efforts? The mission statement that the teacher diversity advocates came up with is, we are committed to become advocates for diversity in our own communities and schools by recruiting and sustaining a diverse body of teachers, providing inclusive classroom resources, and promoting humanizing pedagogies. I have been deeply inspired by the commitment that they have shown to do right by their students. Um, and also for their vision of a more just world through the work of education. Funded through a UCI educational research initiative designed to support MIT candidates who are dedicated to building an inclusive and social justice oriented community of teachers, it is my honor to present the Teacher Diversity Advocacy Awards to Maria Santos. I don't know if she's here. Not here? <laughs> Fatima Alcom, Taylor Vivanco, and La Tierra Roberts.
It's our first time meeting. <laughs> I know. We have had so many Zoom conversations. Is it just them first? Uh, yeah, individually. Our next award is uh, the Rudy Hanley uh, Scholarship. Rudy Hanley uh, received a BA in mathematics in 1972 and here at UCI and then went on to get his creden teaching credential in 1975, uh, from, also from UCI. Uh, he started his career as a math teacher but then uh, went into banking and ended up becoming the president and CEO of School's First Federal Credit Union. And uh, it is granted to incoming students pursuing a master's in teaching who demonstrate the highest level potential for future success in their academic endeavors and future careers. Uh, the first awardee is uh, Saya Perast. And um, uh, Saya um, was, is really uh, appreciative of the teachers who cared beyond academic aspects of education and encouraged personal growth and success uh, that inspired her to become uh, an educator. And we're so glad you did. You. And the second uh, awardee is Kayla Klusman. And she was also inspired by her teachers who were supportive and caring. And I'm sure you're, you are both going to end up being those kind of teachers for all of your students as well. Congratulations. <laughs> and Young Sook. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's great to see. <laughs> great to see many of you. Uh, I taught a summer class with you guys, so it's fantastic to see you. My name is Young Sukhariski. I'm a professor and senior associate dean, and I'm so thrilled and honored to be here. So I'm going to present uh, the Thriving Teacher Fellowship Award. The Thriving Teacher Fellowship is awarded to MAT candidates who demonstrate a commitment to promoting educational opportunity and success in historically marginalized communities. And this cannot be even more, uh, more important in these days. So uh, the word goes to three people. Savannah T uh, Hobson. Savannah felt underrepresented, um, she felt underrepresented in school when she was in school and her voice was not recognized. So she wishes to become a teacher for children from underrepresented groups. So Savannah is very All right, so the next person is Kamasi Kendrick. Kamasi, yay. So Kamasi wants to make a real difference in student lives, providing ongoing support to students. All right, so Kamasi. Thank you. Thank you. And last one, Latiera Roberts. Okay. So she's in the art program, and she said art is not an option but it's necessary to sustain childlike wonder and creative spark. Latiera wants to become a, the supportive system uh, for those who are in need of creative outlet.
Um, this next award is uh, the Owen Thomas Award. Uh, it's the Owen Thomas Memorial Scholarship. It was established to honor and recognize Dr. Owen Thomas, a professor in linguistics, education, and English at UCI from 1975 to 1990. It honors an outstanding UCI undergraduate scholar in English who, uh, who is now completing a secondary English teaching credential. Owen Thomas was a true teacher's teacher. Whether he was teaching pre-service elementary teachers English language arts methodology or veteran teachers returning for a summer institu institute, he was sought after for his knowledge and advice. Watching him leave a classroom was like watching the Pied Piper with a long trail of students following him. Dr. Thomas was the author of several, sorry, several scholarly books, uh, the most notable being Transformational Grammar and the Teacher of English, and the Norton Critical Edition of Walden and Civil Disobedience. Perhaps uniquely among English professors, he was eager to influence language arts in the classroom. And to that end, he authored or co-authored language arts textbooks and software that reached children all over the country. Notably, he also co-founded the, was a, he also co-founded the Writing Project at UCI in 1978. Uh, clearly, this memorial scholarship is only one of the ways Owen Thomas's legacy lives on and continues to impact the lives of pre-service teachers and K-12 students. We'd like to thank Irene Thomas and her daughter, Eva Thomas, for supplementing the scholarship in order to provide additional support for future promising English teachers. So this award goes to Vivian Rengel. Congratulations. Vivian's goals as an English teacher are not only to foster a love of literature, but to also encourage her and students to be active citizens in their communities. Thank you. It's my pleasure now to introduce the uh, Presidential Educators Awards. These awards are given out uh, by the University of California President's Office. The University of California has 10 campuses uh, across the state, and they're all run uh, out of the Oakland uh, University of California President's Office. And Th uh, that office has made scholarship uh, um, resources available to supporting teacher educators in the state. And it's my pleasure to uh, uh, call up the first awardee, uh, McKenna Lynn Elo. Uh, and I apologize, I didn't prepare for these second awardees because I, I thought I only had to appear once. So uh, I can, uh, I'll have to improvise a little bit. Uh, McKenna is passionate about this career because teachers have the power to change this world for the better each and every day by pouring into their students and showing them what it means to be true leaders. Absolutely, absolutely the case. McKenna. Uh, the second person I'd like to uh, welcome up is uh, Kim Bui. Uh, Kim? Okay, we'll set that aside. The, th uh, the next uh, awardee to be called up is uh, uh, Genesis uh, Pina Villanueva. <laughs> no, I, go I got it, thank you. Genesis Kim uh, hopes to make students feel like they play an important role in history and society by sharing stories of people who look like them, come from similar situations, and did extraordinary things, even if the odds seem to be against them. Genesis. Uh, 
I'd like to call up uh, Kariana Neves for an award. Uh, the next awardee would be will be Stacy Trejo. Uh, oh, Stacy, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Stacy uh, uh, is ignited by passion to work with underserved children, and uh, she hopes to equip herself with the knowledge and tools necessary to empower her students to break down any barriers they may face in their educations. Thank you. Stacy. Uh, please know I'm. Please know I'm very sympathetic to people taking off their mask. I just feel uh, um, in my role I'm not able to do that, uh, but I, <laughs> but I am very sympathetic. Uh, uh, I'd like to call up next uh, Victoria Gulam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure she heard that wherever she was. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, the, the last award for the President's uh, Educator Fellowship is Esmeralda Alba Campos. As a, as a teacher, Esmeralda uh, hopes to empower her students and help them strive to do their best in life. She's loved helping students her whole life in and out of the classroom, so I'm looking forward to having my own classroom in the future. Esmeralda. The next scholarship is the Promising Teacher Scholarship, and this scholarship is funded by community members and School of Education faculty and staff, and serves to honor high-need candidates who demonstrate a commitment to improving the lives of children and youth. And our first recipient is Lauren Alimento. <laughs> And Lauren wants to inspire her students to use their education to solve societal problems and make a positive impact in their communities. <laughs> um, Abra A Yeftali. And Abe wants to support his students in transforming not only their communities and their country, but also the world. <laughs> Anthony Buncab. He's not here. Pamela Huerta. I don't think she's here. John Andricos. Congratulations. And John is committed to creating a trusting and engaging learning environment for his students. Daisy Rios. Andrea Ayala. Andrea is committed to creating an environment where her students are proud to be who they are. Yeah. 
Brianna Barnes. Daisy Garcia. Congratulations, Daisy. Daisy is committed to supporting students to be proud and confident in themselves and their culture. Coraima Wante Gonzalez. Koraima wants to inspire her students to be the best version of themselves. Congratulations to all of you. So the next award is Inspir Inspirational Future Teacher Award. This award is provided through a Hispanic Serving Institution uh, grant from the Department of Education to support students who demonstrate the potential to become inspirational teachers. So there are, we have several awardees and uh, I gotta say, um, there was some overlap between what I caught got from the quotes from what Muriel, you got it. So there will be some overlaps, okay? So the first already is Karina Baeza. <laughs> Karina. <laughs> so <laughs> Karina well, hopes to create an environment where every student lives feeling valued and knows that their thoughts and opinions matter. Congratulations, Karina. It's so good to see you again. Yeah. Right. So good to see you. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, next award is Nathalie Nguyen. Where's Nathalie? Nope. All right. Uh, Nathalie, her mission is to contribute uh, positively to formative experiences for young people. Uh, the next person is Daisy, Daisy Rios. She wants to provide support so that uh, students can gain knowledge, confidence, and the motivation to do well in school. Next is Pamela Huarte, is not here. So she remembers her high school teachers, uh, one of them especially, uh, guiding her through the college transition, and she wants to be that kind of person. Now the next person is Jennifer Martinez. So Jennifer, similar to Pamela, once uh, remembers a few, uh, actually no different, she remembers few color, uh, uh, teachers of color when she was growing up. So she would like to be the voices and, and bring the perspectives that are not often uh, recognized and represented in the school. Now, <laughs> Evelyn Gomez Polido. Do we have it? Do we have her? Nope. So Evelyn, um, she was, she's, uh, she was, is an, a child of migrant, my immigrant parents, and she hopes to support students, particularly English learners. <laughs> now, Angelica Campus. <laughs> Angelica <laughs> would like to inspire students and give them a voice and make them active participants of, of the uh, society. Now, Yesenia Sanchez. Yay, Yesenia is here, yay. <laughs> okay. Yesenia would like to cultivate a safe learning environment that encourages freedom dreaming and living for a purpose and self-empowerment. Give me one second. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Maria Santos. Maria remembers many great teachers who impacted her positively and the school became her safe haven. So she would like to be that supportive teacher. 
The next person is Alondra Perez. So Alondra states that language is a very important part of one's identity, which I completely agree. Alondra would like to contribute to creating a culture of celebrating bilingualism. Andrea Ayala. Andrea would like to work in communities like those where she grew up and become a teacher who can connect with students from marginalized backgrounds. Congratulations. <laughs> Laura Lam Ramirez. Hey, there she is. So Laura remembers her own struggle as an English learner and hopes to create a positive impact on students so that their voice can be recognized. Congratulations. <laughs> Reina Gonzalez Jimenez. Reina decided to become a teacher after getting support uh, herself and she got her uh, support for herself and then wishes to make a lifelong impact on students. Very nice. Congratulations. Good to see you again. <laughs> Jocelyn Josie Aguirre Reyes. <laughs> Josie. So Josie remembers her struggle in discovering her multicultural identity. As a teacher, Jazzy would like to inspire students so that they appreciate and embrace who they are. I know, I know. So this is so <laughs> Daisy Garcia. Daisy, for Daisy, her former teachers inspired her to choose the path for teaching, and she would like to help students find confidence in themselves and their culture. Congratulations. Diana uh, Capizano, Santa Maria. So Diana wants to become a teacher who is a resource for our students who look for help. Congratulations. <laughs> Esmeralda Alba Campus. Esme. Okay. So Esme would like to empower students and help thrive in lives. Congratulations. Uh, Miriam um, Candelario Sandoval. There you go. Miriam would like to uh, be part of transforming students' lives for the better with her commitment and compassion. Congratulations, Miriam. All right, so last but not least, Coraima Juante Gonzalez. So you would like to inspire students and help them uh, success, be successful despite many challenges in life. Congratulations, Kurama. Great to see you.
Okay. Hello again. I know, no crying. But you know what? It just when teachers cry, they humanize things. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm here to present the um, the recipients, actually, of the Santa Ana Unified School District Math and Science uh, Residency Program. So Santa Ana Unified School District residency candidates are supported by a partnership, uh, a partnership grant that we have with Santa Ana Unified School District and the UCI School of Education. These residents are being recognized for their demonstrated commitment to developing the skills, knowledge, and dispositions of exceptional science and mathematics teachers. Um, this residency is special in the sense that all of the residents are cohorted together. So all 10 candidates are student teaching at one school site, <laughs> Valley High School in Santa Ana. So. Um, Yes, they see each other in the morning and see each other at lunch and see each other when they leave and see each other in class and, you know, just see each other all day. So, great bonding. So, our very first awardee is Annie Flatty. <laughs> and so, my new app that I downloaded just not working. So um, I'm going to be like the dean and I'm going to improvise as well. Teachers sometimes have to fake it until we make it. So uh, Annie is passionate, thoughtful, diligent, and a strong leader for our class of 2022. Um, she wants to give the gift, her gifts and talents to the next generation of students. Uh, she values them all and um, she is a strong advocate for math. She loves math, and Annie is our, our calculus teacher, so um, need a tutor. There you go. So congratulations, Annie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I should have. <laughs> Okay, our next awardee is Alejandra Dominguez. <laughs> Alejandra is our sole chemistry candidate in the residency. Uh, she's curious, dedicated, ambitious. Um, she wants to be a science teacher because she wants students to see the connection between science and the different aspects in their lives. So congratulations, Alejandra. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, our next awardee is Scott Ferguson. <laughs> Scott is passionate, curious, engaged. Um, in education, he's found a combination of a job in which he can share his love for science, but also work to create a more equitable world. And uh, Scott is really passionate about environmental sciences and environmental justice, so... Congratulations, Scott. <laughs> You're welcome. Here, picture of Scott. <laughs> it helps to open it. Our next awardee is Amber. Amber Lee. <laughs> Amber is empathetic, patient, equitable. She's grateful to have the support of peers and her mentors. Um, and this will allow her to fully focus on her goal of becoming a science teacher and helping students develop their scientific skills and hopefully a love of science. So congratulations, Amber. You're welcome. Our next awardee is Romario Rios. Oh, oh, I'm well. Okay, sorry that I was out of order. Okay, Brianna, it's Brianna instead. <laughs> Brianna is ambitious, understanding, organized. 
Um, she understands how vital it is for teachers to be involved in their students' lives and to truly care about their students' well-being for them to succeed. As a math teacher, she strives to make students feel welcome, important, and capable. So, thank you. Congratulations, Tiana. <laughs> Now we have uh, Romario. <laughs> so Romario is dedicated, inquisitive, empathetic. Uh, math was something that brought anxiety uh, to students, and um, he wants to help students overcome those anxieties and challenges. Don't we all need that? Mm -hmm. OK, congratulations, Romario. <laughs> All right, the next candidate is Jin Sik Sun. <laughs> Jin is empathet em empathetic. Okay, we are improvising. <laughs> Open minded and optimistic. Uh, he believes there's a lot of students who are in uh, the similar situation of, of this high school, and he wants to be a resourceful adult every student who needs help. So congratulations, Jean. You're welcome. <laughs> Our next awardee is uh, An Fan. <laughs> An is friendly, dad joke enthusiast. <laughs> Gotta talk to her afterwards. <laughs> and empathetic, um, and let's see. For her, the art of teaching is the embodiment of a scientific process that involves multiple trials and errors, constant reflection, and consideration of different perspectives. So congratulations on. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next awardee is Sarah Foreman. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah is curious, practical, creative, as you can see. <laughs> um, with a background in the sciences, she felt equipped with knowledge on how biology worked, but it was her training in the humanities that taught her why it all mattered, the improvement of the human experience. So congratulations, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we have Ashley. Is she here? Burhan? Is she here? Oh, she's not here. So congratulations to all our Santa Ana residents. And uh, I will take a group shot. Yeah. All right, everyone, zot, zot, zot. Um, so I just want to, uh, in closing, uh, you know, look around. There's uh, maybe 40 students here that each will touch in the next 10, 20, 30 years of their career. Students in their classroom do the math it, the impact that this small group will have on the future of this region is tremendous. And economists often talk about return on investment. Well, I can't imagine any place in America today where the awards given out tonight won't have a greater return on investment than here. And so, 
Let's take this moment, recognize the accomplishments of the group, and honor your commitment to teaching. Thanks for coming. Let's uh, uh, on to the reception. Yeah.